All right, guys, welcome back or welcome to the garage. We are just about to start on our winter project list. Uh, we're starting with the TR250, the 68 Triumph TR250. And uh, we are going to be replacing the stock Zenith Stromberg carburetors with the triple Weber DCOEs that actually came on this car originally. We actually ran the car uh, initially with the Weber DCOEs and found we had some tuning issues. And I wasn't quite happy with the setup that we had as far as the accelerator linkage was concerned and as far as the manifold, intake manifolds were concerned. So we've got the box over here. We've just uh, dug it off the top shelf of the mezzanine and we're just about to dust it off and open it up and have a chat about what the plans are for reinstalling these Triple Weber DOC DCOEs on the 68 Triumph TR250. Stay tuned. All right, let's open this box and uh, get it unpacked. Like I said, it's been up on the shelf for quite a few months now, and uh, we'll get it unpacked. We do actually have a new manifold, and not a new manifold, but a new to mean manifold that we're going to take out here and have a look at. It's a Canon manifold versus the uh, manifolds that actually came on this car. And I say manifolds because they were individual manifolds, not one-piece manifolds. So anyway, let me get this unpacked, and we'll show you what we got here. Uh, in the box. All right, we've got the uh, contents of the storage box unpacked and on display here on my workbench. And as you can see, there are the 40 Weber DCOEs. And you can see the old individual intake manifolds. And here is the new, to me, one piece manifold, which I think is going to help tremendously with uh, some of the tuning and some of the uh, throttle linkage fabrication as opposed to what was on the car previously. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the old linkage off of this manifold and we're give the, going to give this manifold a quick cleanup. It does have some yellow staining for just from storage. I think there's some, some gas residue over here. So we're going to take this probably inside, take the linkage off and give it a quick polish. That's one of the first jobs I want to do before we transfer the uh, carburetors over to the new manifold. All right, we've brought the uh, new to me manifold inside the house and just have it sitting here on my coffee table. And we're just about to start taking the old linkage off. This obviously was installed in a car previously, not my car. Again, I bought this used. So we're going to remove this uh, linkage that's on here currently. I do have a new linkage kit on order, actually from Australia, with billet arms versus these uh, metal arms here. I think the billet is going to be a little bit better as far as uh, just being a little bit more sturdy. <clears throat> so those are on their way. Uh, in the meantime, we'll remove this old uh, linkage items here and we'll get to uh, cleaning this manifold up as best as possible. So there's the before. I don't know how well it's going to clean up. I'm, again, I'm just interested in getting some of this old. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but there's a little bit of a yellow discoloration here. So I'm just interested in getting that sort of cleaned up. I don't think it's going to clean up much better than this. It's actually in pretty good shape. I am not going to bother polishing this. So we'll just get it as clean as possible before we move on to the next step. And for those of you who are interested what I'm going to be using to clean up this uh, intake manifold, uh, we're going to be using the uh, mag and aluminum polish from Mothers. All right, guys, welcome back. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I took the last segment of video. I'd had to travel for the last uh, couple of weeks on business, so I've been away from home, unfortunately. I think what I, where I left off on the last video clip, I was just bringing the manifold inside to kind of clean it up a little bit. And I've done that and I've also replaced some of the parts temporarily. Uh, I'd actually had another set of these uh, rose joints here for the rod to fit through because the joints that were actually on this uh, intake manifold were these ones and the rod was actually rusted to them. So I actually had to really aggressively get these off the rod and actually bent them a little bit in doing so. So anyway, these were on here temporarily. Here is the old rod here. And I may have mentioned in my previous video segment as well that I was waiting for some parts to arrive from Australia. I'd ordered a new linkage kit. Well, that kit has arrived today. So here is the new linkage kit. And here are the billet arms. I think I had mentioned that I was uh, waiting for. They are much nicer than the other arms I had, which are just a sort of a plain stamp steel arm. I would never really was really happy with the way that these uh, connected to the 
the throttle shaft or the the shaft here. Um, these ones, I've got a nice little sort of set screw arrangement here, um, right here with a hex key. They're a little bit more of a positive uh, feel to them. So I was happy, I'm going to be happy to get away from these uh, stamped steel versions. Also, the linkages are quite a bit nicer. The little uh, uh, balls here on the end versus these style. So I wanted to upgrade those as well. We also have new uh, link linkages for our Weber's here, you can see these were pretty uh, fabbed up custom by the previous owner. So it'll be nice to put some uh, factory Weber stuff back on there and get it back to uh, operating a little bit more smoothly. Here is the new rod in the front here. Here is the previous one. And again, it's got some scoring and it was, again, rusted to the old balls on these uh, joints here. So we're going to remove these little collars. We're going to put the new rod in and... Uh, then we're going to maybe actually try to mount the carbs up. I'm trying to decide if I have fasteners for these studs. My old um, manifolds actually had through bolts here. They weren't studded. So I'm not sure if I've got actual nuts or hardware to fit these studs. I think those might be metric on there. But anyway, we're going to pull them apart and see if we can actually get the carburetors mounted up to the uh, new manifold or new to me manifold. And then we'll play around with getting the uh, linkages hooked up at uh, a later date. I thought I'd just give you a quick update. All right, back from the hardware store, just picked up some new fasteners, and we're just about to start uh, taking the carburetors off the old intakes, the individual intakes. So uh, I just wanted you to have a quick look of how these are mounted currently. So we've got a nice adapter plate here between the manifold and the carburetor. This is O-ringed on both sides, so it's a billet piece, nice and uh, high quality. Then they are soft mounted with these uh, cup washers at the top and inside these cup washers, there's a rubber bushing. On the bottom side, they are mounted with, I believe these are called Thackeray washers. So these nuts are tightened down until there's a certain gap left in the Thackeray washer that's measured with a feeler gauge. So I'm gonna have to look up what that gap is supposed to be. So technically these uh, carburetors are soft mounted. So what we're gonna do now is to detach them from the old manifolds and get ready to put them on the new single manifold. I'm calling it individual manifolds. Well, the new manifold is a single manifold. So we're just going to go ahead and fit those up loosely now. All right, just a little bit better look at these adapters with the O-rings on either side there. Again, a nice billet piece. Here are those uh, aforementioned uh, little cup washers with the rubber bush or rubber bobbin inside and then the Thackeray washers as well that are part of the soft mount. So there you go. Well, let's move on to the next thing. We're gonna figure out what we wanna do as far as the linkage arms are concerned. You can see this one is very, well, you can see how loose this one is wobbling back and forth on the shaft. So, uh, and very homemade looking as well. You can see the brazing on there and none of them match whatsoever. So this was another issue with me trying to get this car tuned previously is because Everything was so mismatched and so loose, uh, it was becoming problematic to get them uh, set up properly. So we're hoping to rectify that with this new linkage over here. All right, guys, Saturday morning back on the Weber project here on the coffee table in the family room, Blues Brother on TV. And uh, we're just finding a little bit of an issue with uh, the setup here. We played around with this last night for a little bit and I had it actually set up. I was gonna actually take some video of how I had it set up, but I knew it was incorrect. Um, what's basically happened here is I've got a problem with the throttle levers and these levers hook up to the spindles here on the uh, Weber carburetor shafts to turn the butterflies. Now these uh, little levers come in left and right handed. So this is a left handed one and it would fit something like that if I were to use this side as the actuator for the butterflies. However, the problem with that is that brings this rod out. If I was trying to use this on the outside here, that brings this rod out too far. And it actually is fairly flexible because it's not by one of these uh, towers here. So it would be better for me to be able to do the throttles here, here, and here, as opposed to out here and then across, because I don't want to really utilize this outside lever if possible. The only problem is now I'm short on the right-handed uh, levers. I have three uh, left-handed levers uh, that look something like this. 
and we can utilize these. My problem is the little tab on the bottom is the wrong way. So these tabs actually hook up to this little, um, I don't know if I can show it here a little bit easier, this little spring-loaded uh, screw, which uh, increases or decreases the idle on the individual carburetor itself. So anyway, that's an issue. So I'm thinking I might be able to go out to the garage, heat these little tabs up and bend them the other way to make them usable. I had tried that before. I believe I had done this one without trying to heat it and we ended up cracking it. So I've got to be careful. This may not work, but we'll see if I can actually bend these tabs the other way and then we won't have to wait for more parts to come. All right, guys, quick update for you, making pretty good progress on this linkage. So we've got everything situated where we want it to now. Uh, as I'd mentioned before, we've got it driving the outside right side of each of the uh, Weber DCOEs. Now, a couple things that I did notice along the way. Number one is that number one carb actually has a different carb body. They are, it is a DCOE 40 carburetor, as are all of them DCOE 2s. But I've noticed that this carburetor over here doesn't have a boss like this carburetor here, and if you can see that in there, and this carburetor here on the outside also have a, has a boss. Well, that boss was interfering with the linkage when I pushed it down here. That nut was just basically grazing that boss. We had to do a little bit of trimming off the end of the uh, bolt uh, going through there, and I actually did a little bit of grinding on the, the casing of the uh, Weber as well. Just a tiny little bit for some clearance. I couldn't really turn it around the other way because then the ball would basically foul there. So had to make a little bit of a clearance there for that. Other than that, I really like the billet linkages. These uh, fit in here quite nicely. I would have preferred to have the ball side on this side, but I just couldn't make that work that way. So we've got the ball on the outside of the linkage. But it's much better this way. It's There's less stress on the rod, obviously, with this being here as a support versus it being way, way out here, as I'd mentioned previously. We will cut this off at some point when we're sure that uh, the linkage is at where we want it to be, but it's functioning really nicely right now. No binding, it snaps back really nicely. I've had a look down the uh, carburetor uh, throttle, or th uh, the throats basically to see how the uh, actions of the uh, throttle plates are and they look good. Uh, one more uh, thing that I had to look at, and maybe I'll flip the carbs over and I'll come back and I'll, tell you about another little thing that was a little bit surprising for me on the bottom of the carburetors and I'll also show you again going back to the Rat Ratco throttle linkage I've got the bracket attached where the cable pull is going to be on the bottom we'll talk about that a little bit all right one of the other issues I was having was with this little lever here at the uh, bottom of the uh, throttle lever which rests on this little boss on the bottom of the carburetor well I realized that that boss was a little bit different actually on the middle and on the outside carb and those levers were actually not returning fully to home so you can see that lever there so i've just actually trimmed that down a little bit so it fits in that little pocket and it returns fully and then the actual adjustment can be done with the uh with the screw there you can see with the little spring on it that can bring the adjustment down for each of the carbs individually. So here is the bracket from the uh, Ratco throttle cable setup. I'm not sure whether this is going to interfere with my header or not on the car. It also does not quite work on the Webers like I thought it would. Um, I, would I was hoping that this secondary bolt hole would align with the bottom of the Webers, but it doesn't. So I might have to modify this slightly. I'll probably just notch it, bend it over, and re-weld it to be able to pick up this bolt hole here. So... Although I think it's in a fairly good location, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually get the uh, Ratco throttle cable actually out and we're going to see how the run works, whether it's a, you know, a nice straight drop down from this lever up here that I've installed down to where it'll be installed here. Uh, there's a little a ferrule or a bezel that goes here that affixes here for the throttle cable pull and then goes over to the bell crank at the firewall to pull on it. So let's get let's break out the uh, Ratco throttle cable and have a look at that. All right, I've had this cable kit, I'm gonna say probably for more than 10 years, sitting in my uh, parts stash. And there is the uh, throttle linkage kit part number. I'm assuming it's still the same part number today if you go to the uh, Ratco website. So there's the website there. I think that's still the web address. Anyway, if you just Google Ratco and Triumph, Roadtronics Automotive Technology Company, 
you're going to find their website. They've got lots of great products there. So I've showed you the bracket that fits underneath the carburetors. And again, this could be used for uh, Stromberg, SUs, or Weber carburetors. Uh, and then it comes with this really nice uh, low-car cable. And we'll go through the installation of this later on. It also has a bracket, which is for the, at the bell crank on the firewall, this bracket is installed. It comes with the hardware for that as well. And then the cable is installed and hooks up to the, to the throttle lever that's on the bulkhead of the car. And uh, then this cable actuates the pole up here where it'll be hooked up on this lever here, hopefully. That's the intent anyway. I'm not sure if that's going to work. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, so there's the contents of the kit. I did actually buy another cable, just so that this is a cheaper cable from Amazon. It's very, very similar to this low car kit. And I just thought I would basically use this for a mock-up. I don't want to, this entails a little bit of cutting actually. So uh, I thought I would buy a spare cable just to do a bit of the mock-up work and not uh, destroy the good low car cable. Anyway, that's where we're at. We'll bring you back later. All right, we've got the uh, throttle pull cable installed and I think this is gonna work pretty well. You can see it installed here. And if I just take you through the manifold and over through to the bottom to the bracket, you can see that it's actually a pretty straight run. Now, again, I'm gonna have to check for clearance with the header, make sure that this bracket clears. I can always shorten it a little bit if I have to bring it up. So we'll see once we, uh, once we get this fitted to the car if that's gonna clear or not. And obviously that pull goes across and it ends here at this point, which is going to be at the bell crank at the um, firewall. So to the throttle shaft going across the, uh, the firewall. So anyway, this cable is going to have to be shortened, obviously. So there's a process to do that and we'll follow that once we get to that point. But for now, the mock-up is good using that dummy cable from Amazon. And we'll use the real cable when we, uh, when we come to actually fitting it to the car. We'll just keep this one as a spare in the uh, in the boot just in case the cable breaks at some point. So that's looking good. I think the next step now is to go out to the garage and probably remove the existing carbs, the stock Zena Stromberg carbs, off the car. All right, minus two outside, but still no snow up here, which is a good thing. Um, we are going to work on getting the uh, TR250 squared up a little bit more in the center of this garage bay over on this side in order to put it up on jack stands to get it to a little bit better working height so we can more easily remove the stock Zena Stromberg carburetors that are on this car. So we'll have a quick look at those. Car does run really well on these carburetors as expected, but um, some of you might be asking, well, why don't you just leave them? Well, the car was built with the intent of using the triple um, Weber carburetors. So I've got all the performance mods required to try to get this car up to more of a, a UK spec. So it has the 150 BPH uh, PI cam in the car, for example. It's got the header and it's got some head work done to it, uh, higher compression. So we want to run the Triple Webers as intended on this car. So that's why we're going to be going back to it. This setup here with the uh, dual Strombergs was just a, sort of a stopgap measure to get the car up and running into the trials. So we could uh, get it there with the intent of actually putting the triple Webers back on the car at some point, And now is that time. So, like I said, we'll get the car up on jack stands and we'll start the uh, removal process of the stock Zena Stromberg carburetors. All right, possibly the final startup on the uh, Zena Strombergs. Like I said, it's cold out here, so a little bit of white smoke. this thing out of gas and we'll get it up in the air let it cool down and we'll start the removal process of the Zena Strombergs 
All right, we've got her up in the air at a better uh, working height to get those uh, carburetors off. I've got my Bobby Danielson's uh, blanket here, surround. I haven't used this for a few years, dug it out of the basement. It's perfect for this type of job. Got a couple nice pockets here to rest some tools or some parts in and uh, not scratch your fenders at the same time. So anyway, we'll let this cool off a little bit. Still a little warm to the touch. And uh, we did run out of fuel, so we won't have any fuel sloshing everywhere when we remove the old carbs. And uh, I guess the next thing we'll do is we'll start disconnecting some hoses and some choke cables, etc., and some fuel lines, and we'll start getting those stock carburetors off. That wasn't too too bad. The uh, seeing the strong birds are off, so we can bring the Webers out and do a test fit to see if we get any interference issues with the header. And I already see I had to make a little bit of a clearance mark for the even for the stock carburetor manifold. There's a little hammer mark there, nothing too significant, but just a small little divot dimple. So uh, yeah, let's go inside and we'll bring the carbs out and we'll see if they'll fit without too much modification. All right, good news. Webers are back on and no interference with the uh, bracket down there. Got lots of clearance or not lots of clearance, but clearance from the header, which is good. So we'll have to take that back off or the Webers back off. We're going to have to uh, fix that bracket so it picks up those two mounting locations on the bottom of the carburetor, like I'd mentioned before. Probably just do a little uh, little cut and a little bend and a little re-weld for that to work. But uh, I think that's going to work pretty well. Uh, lineup looks pretty good. I might even be able to bring this forward one. We will see. Anyway, that ends up hooking up to the bell crank over here. It's a little dark, but again, the cable is going to hook up back to here. So we'll have to do some uh, focus back to here. So we'll have to do some uh, cable routing and cable trimming for that to work. The other option was to bring the cable out to here and pull from here, this location. But I think we're probably good just where it's at. All right, so I guess we'll pull them back off now. We know they fit, and we'll work on that uh, little bracket to hold the cable, and then we'll work on setting up the uh, firewall piece uh, for that cable to fit into for the uh, Ratco kit, and then we'll move forward. So making steps forward. Well, finally got a little bit of snow on the ground. Uh, first snow of the year, really, that's basically stayed. It's a little chilly out here, about minus 5 degrees Celsius, but we're on our way to the garage. Actually, we've been out already once to put the heat on out here, but we're going to continue on with the uh, throttle cable install on the Weber, triple Weber installation on the 1968 TR250. Let's get crack a lacking. All right, we're at the uh, Rusty Beauty shop, and uh, Alina is helping me do this bracket since my welder is packed up. And... Uh, so we've cut that bracket because we needed to fit between these two posts down here, these two uh, studs for the Webers, and it just wasn't working out. So we cut it down the middle, or close to the middle, and Lynn's got a similar thickness piece here, and we're just going to uh, graft in a piece so that fits properly here and won't spin when we pull the throttle cable. All right, back in the garage, and uh, thanks to Lynn for helping me out with that bracket yesterday. We've extended it slightly to bring it over to pick up that bottom stud on the right hand side so that's ready to go and I've been playing around just with fitting the, uh, the actual cable to see to make sure I've got a nice straight pull up to the levers on the uh, cross shaft so that looks good. We have come out and done a little bit of work on the car and just clearanced a few items because we need to do a few things here at the firewall. So I've disconnected the ground wire, moved a few things, uh, a little coolant coming out of here because we moved one of the coolant hoses to get uh, a little bit more clearance. So we're ready to go on to the next step. So we'll talk about what that's gonna be. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do on the projects is actually work on the throttle cable installation itself. So as mentioned previously, this is a Ratco throttle cable and we have the instructions here directly from Ratco. These are in black and white, but if you go on their website, 
there's a color version of them if you need that. I'm also using a couple of excellent other resources. So uh, from a YouTube perspective, we've got uh, Dave's TR4A here, who's installed this uh, Ratco throttle cable on his uh, TR4A. So I'm using Dave's uh, YouTube video, excellent YouTube videos on this to help me out. And I'm also using uh, a reference that uh, Ratco actually uses in their literature. And this is the 74tr6.com website. This is a website uh, owned by Paul Rigo, who is a TR6 owner as well. So a couple of good resources there to use in the installation of this cable. So the first thing we need to figure out is the installation of this bracket piece. Uh, that actually fits up here at the bulkhead and it's my understanding from what I've read that this will probably need to be bent slightly for this to work uh, in any way shape or form. I know Dave had to uh, bend his piece. I believe Paul had to bend his as well so I'm expecting to have to bend this in some way shape or form to make the cable work. Anyway I have a little bit of an issue on my car and uh, it's just here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. You see I have a ground lug right there? So that just almost fouls with where that bracket needs to be. You can probably see there, I've already marked a couple of holes. You can probably see at least one of the holes that I need to drill. So there are actually two holes that you need to drill to obviously affix this to the bulkhead. And uh, Ratco does supply hardware, hardware with you that you would bolt through the bulkhead to the underside of the bulkhead inside the car. But I like Dave's uh, suggestion of using riv nuts. So we're going to do the same as Dave did and use riv nuts or threaded inserts um, to actually fasten this bracket. Once we get it positioned, once we drill the holes, we'll do the riv nuts and then we'll secure this bracket to the uh, firewall and move on to the next step. Okay, we've got the, uh, the two riv nuts installed and we now have the bracket installed. So just make sure it's centered and uh, make sure this is fairly close to being equal to the uh, bulkhead here, this slot at the rear. Um, mine's a little bit forward of that, just because of that uh, little um, ground point. I didn't want to really move that, but it's going to be fine because my throttle stops well short of that. Even if I have to adjust it for more throttle play by adjusting the pedal stop, I've got a lot more to go before it actually hits the rear of this bracket. So. Anyway, that's where we're at for now. So now, for sure, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to modify this nose piece based on what I've read and what I've seen from the other guys who've done this installation previously. I believe this is going to need to be bent down more to pick up the uh, throttle cable and to get a better angle at this pickup point here on this bell crank. So let's play with that. All right, not sure where we left off, but we do have that bracket installed and I did end up bending it to a point where I could get a nice throw on it. So a really straight line for the cable. It does have some uh, clearance from the header. Now we just have to check to make sure it's got clearance from the bottom of the intake manifold. So that will be the next step is to put the carbs back on and see if we've got clearance there for that. Otherwise we might have to do a little bit more bending. The next step after we check for clearance is then to start looking at the cable run and eventually once we measure things we're going to have to shorten this outer sheath and it's important to know this ferrule apparently can cause some issues so i've got it taped on here temporarily but if this ferrule comes off the end of this cable there's no way you're getting it back on so there's a certain process when you go to actually sh shorten the cable that you need to do in order to be able to maintain this ferrule on the end of the cable and we'll go through that when we get to it. Then the next step after that will be to measure up and then trim the inner cable to uh, hook it up to the actual pull on the cross throttle rod on the top of the carburetor. So hopefully those steps make sense. So carburetors are going back on. We'll check for clearance first on that pull area there. All right, here we are with the cable just about to uh, shorten the outer sheath. And the red mark is where I've marked it. And you can see I've just put a piece of tape there just beside it. And you can see that the ferrule is on this side of the mark. So the intent is to cut it just at the electrical tape. I want to leave a little bit of tape so it doesn't unfurl and end up like the end of this braided cable because that's the problem. You can't get the ferrule on if you've got those burrs and it's starting to unwind at the end. So we're going to cut just in, into the electrical tape and we're going to slide the ferrule up and slide the tape off and we should be good. Hopefully the length is correct. Um, I could be using my dummy cable to do this, but I'm fairly confident that that's the correct length. It's not very long, 
but uh, should be sufficient. All right, there's a shot of the shortened cable and the ferrule end. And I've just got some black electrical tape in there just to keep it from sliding. Some guys will actually uh, JB weld this and let it sit overnight. We'll just keep the electrical tape on there for now temporarily. I do have some JB weld standing by. But let's get this back on the car and see if I measured this correctly. Cross your fingers. All right, not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but the outer sheath is installed and uh, the ferrule is up under the fitting. Just focus. There we go. So we've got a little bit of a leisurely loop going on, they call it. And uh, then we've got the hard cable or the center cable coming up through the sheath and we're just measuring where we need it to be. We're going to leave it a little bit long. So we've made a mark on the cable and uh, we're going to take this back off now. And there's a little bit of a trick to uh, cutting this as well, just to keep the ends from fraying. So we'll take you back and we'll show you that. All right, this tip comes from, uh, I believe it comes from Dave, uh, from Dave's TR4A. And we're gonna use a little bit of uh, shrink tubing on this inner cable. And you can see my red mark there. We're just gonna cover that up. We're gonna shrink the tube and then we're gonna cut it with a Dremel cutoff wheel. All right, quick update. Everything is installed and seems to be working like it should. Nothing's been really tightened down yet. But uh, I just jumped in and checked the, uh, the pedal and we're good there. We've got wide open throttle. I do have to adjust the uh, pedal stop in the car. It's a little bit low. So uh, I could probably actuate this here. It's a little difficult to get my hand in there, but you can see we've got nice action on the throttles and they do return back home, which is nice. So uh, now the next step will be to try to see if I can get all of the fasteners in all the footballs in underneath this manifold with the carburetors attached. That's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but we'll give it a shot. I don't really wanna to have to do it uh, separately, put the manifold off and uh, on and then the carburetors because that's gonna be a hassle. So we'll just take our time and see if we can get these uh, manifolds back on and attached without too much hassle. And eventually we'll get uh, to fire this thing up again once we get some fuel lines run and once we do some baseline adjustments on these carburetors. Just shutting the garage down for the night. And look at that moon tonight. That's pretty darn bright. I don't know if that's what they're calling a beaver moon. Anyway, wait till the clouds go in front of it. All right, welcome back. It's the next day and we've been tinkering out here, just uh, putting things back together. I think that's where we left off yesterday. I did have to remove the uh, bracket that holds the accelerator cable out of the way to be able to do up the bottom nuts on the manifold, particularly in the two center ones. That was one thing I had to do. The two outside nuts that are holding the footballs that hold the bottom of the intake manifold on, uh, you cannot get a socket on those. This has got to be done up with a stubby wrench. So uh, I know about that because uh, we had the same issue working on Jeff Rust 69 TR6 at the trials this year when he had to remove the head. We had to get the carbs off and we needed a stubby wrench to do that. So stubby wrench to the rescue. So that was number two. Number three, having problems with this nut, getting this tightened up. There's no way I can get a wrench on here or a socket because the hole, I think, in the manifold itself has been drilled a little bit off center. And uh, it's hard to get a wrench in there. So that's not as tight as I would like it to be. The other ones are fine. I was able to get either a wrench or a socket on them. Just this one is problematic. So that I'm going to have to probably work on. Maybe I'll have to make a little bit of a, a pass with a, a die grinder or something to give me a little bit more clearance on this side. I don't want to make it too thin, though, so we've got to be careful with that. And everything hooked back up here at the, uh, at the firewall or the bulkhead, including the ground strap back on. So that's ready to go. Hoses are back on. The uh, brake booster pipe, I've just got on here temporarily. We've heated it up slightly and just pushed it over the nipple. It needs to go down a little bit further, but it's on there good enough for now. Uh, I do have the linkages hooked up temporarily because it's going to be difficult to start this car because I don't know how I have the chokes hooked up. So I'm probably going to have to give it a little bit of throttle to get this actually running. We do have the carb set with a baseline setup. So that means that the mixture screws, which are these screws here, have been turned out one full turn. 
the idle screws, which are these screws down here, right there, those are being turned out a quarter turn. So that's my baseline setup to get this running. And then we can, if we can get it running based off those settings, then we can work on tuning these carbs a little bit later with the linkage disconnected. All right, so I'm gonna give this a shot to get this started up. Obviously, it's probably gonna take a wire based on the fact that, a while based on the fact that I don't have the chokes hooked up, the carbs are completely dry. So I'm probably not gonna show you me trying to crank and crank to get this started up. Who knows, it might might crank on the, or might start on the first crank, but um, I'll set you up anyway. And uh, if it takes a while to start, then I'll probably do a little bit of editing and we'll bring you back once I'm getting a little bit closer to getting, kick, getting it kicked over. All right, put you on the tripod. All right, fire extinguisher standing by. Just in case. Battery on. We're going to attempt to do a little bit of uh, tuning. So technically you shouldn't start with the idle circuit first, but it was idling over 2000. So I had to get the idle down a little bit. So we're going to start by doing the mixture. So there are two mixture screws per barrel, or a mixture screw per barrel or two per carb. So the intent now is to uh, turn the mixture screw in and out and listen for how the engine reacts, whether it starts to stumble, or whether it runs sweet, that's kind of where you uh, turn the screws back and forth and listen by ear to see what the reaction is. So we're gonna attempt to do that on each of these uh, six screws.
right there running, but lots more tinkering required. All right, a bunch of tweaking to go, idling much too high, but uh, it's good to get it back running on the Webers. Just having a look at the air fuel. Still running a little rich, according to the gauge, and idling about 500 RPMs too high. Anyway, we'll play around with it, play with the linkages a bit, and uh, obviously the carbs are not even balanced yet, so lots of uh, testing and tuning to come, but at least the Webers are back on the car. All right, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.